Hello, welcome to the Thursday, January 23rd, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Not all malicious emails are written in English. The latest example from Pratt here is a malicious email campaign that's actually targeting German speakers by being written in German. Now, another kind of thing that's uh, interesting about this email campaign and something that becomes more and more common is that uh, these emails appear to be continuing a conversation you may have had with someone. If someone you exchange emails with is getting infected by this malware, then the malware will not just plainly pull in the contact list from the victim, but they'll also look at recent emails that the victim exchanged with the target the malware is going to send the next message to. And they're trying sort of to follow up on a conversation here. Now, it's still pretty mechanic and the text is very short, but it may be enough uh, to trick you into opening the attachment, enabling macros, and getting infected yourself. And with the recent update of Safari in Mac OS, uh, one of the features that was added was intelligent tracking prevention. And what that's supposed to accomplish is to make it more difficult for advertisers and such to track what web websites you are visiting. Well, it uh, turns out that this feature can actually be used against the user and can lead to more tracking. So some researchers from Google have an interesting paper outlining some of the techniques that can be used. What it comes down to is that Safari maintains a list of prevalent domains, domains that you have been visiting and that have consistently been receiving sort of third party requests. So they could potentially be used for tracking. So Safari will then start blocking requests for these domains. And what uh, these Google researchers found is that by essentially loading images and such from these domains, checking whether or not the load fails or doesn't fail, you can essentially enumerate which websites are in a user's prevalent domain list. They outline a couple different methods how you can accomplish uh, this and also put up a proof of concept a website up that can either be used uh, to check among some popular domains which ones you are visiting or it can be used to establish a fingerprint that can then be used to track you. No response from Apple yet about this particular problem. Sounds like a hard thing to fix because what essentially Apple's intelligent tracking prevention is all about is sort of building up a fingerprint of the websites that a user is visiting. And of course, that then inherently leads to the browser having sort of a unique state that's related to the websites that you visited. And that, of course, may then be queried by other sites looking for failure modes as outlined in this paper. I just gave the proof of concept a little spin with Safari. Not 100% sure if it's corrected. It took a while to respond. Looks like the website that's being used here for the proof of concept is a little bit slow, maybe overloaded with traffic. But it did at least sort of detect some domains that I think I had visited in the past. And the Mustic botnet, a botnet that traditionally goes after web application vulnerabilities in routers as well as in systems like WordPress, Drupal, and WebLogic, has added a new trick to its uh, toolkit, and that's uh, brute forcing Tomato routers. Tomato is an open source firmware. It operates on a number of uh, different sort of low end home routers and is often preferred over the stock firmware. Now, note that they are not actually exploiting a specific vulnerability in this case, other than the user setting a predictable password. And as I always say in this case, well, don't expose the admin interface for your routers to the internet. 
But well, with all these vulnerabilities in these home-based routers, Cisco didn't want to be left behind and came up with a long list of patches today. Now, one patch was rated critical, uh, authentication bypass vulnerability in Cisco's Firepower Management Center. Now, this vulnerability only applies to you if you're using LDAP for authentication. If you're not using LDAP, then you should be good. Exploiting this vulnerability, an attacker would send a crafted request via HTTP and would obtain admin access on this affected software. Just as a reminder, if you like this podcast, uh, please leave a review on your favorite platform, in particular on Amazon and Stitcher. We could use more reviews. So if you're using those platforms like Amazon's Alexa Flash Briefing, then uh, please leave a review. And that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.